The new beta for Inkscape 1.4 has released and you can download it now. So today I'm going to show you some of the things that will be changing for the full release. Hello there my friends, Rob here from Button Press Graphics back with another video and today I'm going to be going over some of the major changes that will be coming in the full version of Inkscape version 1.4. So, let's get started. Now if you take a look on screen, there is a lot of things that are going to be added in the new version of Inkscape version 1.4 including a new filter gallery, modular grids and an improved axonometric grid, the swatches, the unified font browser, customizable handles, and there's more like taper stroke LPE, a preview in the spray tool, and new command line options and templates. And that is not forgetting the hundreds of bug fixes alongside them as well. So, let's show you a few of the different things first off one of my personal favorites we now have a filter library it has never been so easy to find the best filter for your needs this new dialog features previews categories and search but before we start if you take a look on screen right now as you can see the user interface has changed a little bit. Now do not worry, this is not going to impact your workflow. All it means is all the icons that were usually at the top underneath the file bar here have now been moved to the right. This stops it from looking so cluttered near the top and makes your workflow a whole lot neater. Now, I know there's going to be a few people who won't like this, but for me personally, I think this is a really good addition. It just makes the whole user interface look cleaner, crisper, and more easily accessible. So, the filter library. Usually, when it comes to filters, you would select what you want to add the filter to, say, all of these here, and these are just uh, vector graphics for Inkscape themselves. And then you would come up to filters and you would do something like you saw me do in last week's video, the shadows and glows, drop shadow, and then you would put a drop shadow behind it. The drop shadow is fairly easy to understand, but when it comes to adding materials, for example, gold paste, now you can say that that's a gold paste, but if you select it, you get something that looks like this. That might not be what you intended. So let me undo that. Well, now we have a filters gallery. If we come to filters, right at the top, you can see filter gallery. Select that and it will open up this menu on the right hand side. And as you can see, you can select all the different options that you want, or you can go to all effects at the very top, and it will list them all in alphabetical order. And now it gives you a preview of all the different filters and what they will do to the image when you apply them. Let's take Duochrome for our example. We can select this and then we can apply to add the filter effect. Now, just like normal, there will be certain filters that will open up a separate window and then you can hit the live preview to see exactly what it would do. And of course, you can change alpha only, you can change it to color only for this particular filter, but obviously you can go through all the filter options and then click apply in order to apply them. Once you have, you can still go back to the filters and you can remove the filters if you don't like it or you can go to your filter editor to get your filter editor open as usual and then you can define all the different elements as you like. 
Next is the modular grid. Now, as you know, I love the axonometric grids. I just think they are really, really cool and I can make some really nice designs like the ones you can see on the screen. They're just really fun to use. Well, now we have a new grid. Now, if we come to our document properties, which used to be at the end on the top here, we can now come down and find it right here. Or you can go to File, Document Properties. Either way, you will get your Document Properties window open like this. And if we navigate to Grids, we will find the standard two that were already there, the rectangular and the axonometric grids. But now we have this one too, Modular. And we have similar options to what we would normally get. We have the block width and height and we have the gap between them but this is the kind of effect that we will be getting now i could foresee this being really good if you had many different icons that you needed to line up and even in the summary when it comes to the modular grids it says you can set the grid angle by ratio for isometric designs and use modular grids to plan layouts and make icons this is a really good addition in my personal opinion of course say we wanted to do 100 by 100 we get our complete squares and then say we wanted a gap of only 10 and then when i close out of that as you can see we now have our grid the swatches have seen some changes too the swatches dialog and palette file handling has been improved it says quick access to dialog layout controls, search for colors, and open different palette file formats. There is also the customizable handles. Power users with CSS knowledge can now customize the styling and basic shape of all the handles. I wish I could show you this, but I don't have a great CSS knowledge. So unfortunately, that's beyond the realms of my knowledge. There is also new templates for folding booklets, additional options in the ruler and taper stroke LPE, preview in the spray tool, many new command line options and updated translations for hundreds of bug fixes. This is all great and brilliant additions to an already very powerful app. But there is one last thing that I wanted to show you something that a lot of people have asked for over the years a unified font browser now this isn't something that is enabled by default you will have to go into your settings now you can do this by going to your preferences you can either go to edit scroll down to the bottom and select preferences or you can select this icon which is now in the bottom right part of the screen and that will bring up your preferences now i've already done mine but if you navigate to tools text tool you'll get this menu open by default this will be checked list fonts and styles separately but we can now use the unified font browser now as you know when it came to listing the fonts and styles separately it was a very clunky way of doing it you would have to select the type of font and then you would see a list of all the different styles that you could use whether that was italics or bold or even semi bold super bold and all that kind of lovely stuff but unless you selected the font previously you wouldn't know what options were available with the unified font browser now you do however one caveat to this feature is you need to select this in the preferences and then restart inkscape until you restart inkscape it will not take effect 
Now let's take the version 1.4. This is a text object, as you can see at the bottom of the screen. So if we open up our text editor by pressing this button here, now you see a massive change. Instead of having all of the styles on the right hand side and the fonts on the left, you can now select any that you want and simply press up and down on the keyboard to select all the different types. For example, the Calibri. We have Calibri Light, Calibri Light Italic, Calibri Regular, Calibri Italic, Calibri Bold, and Calibri Bold Italic. Now just for the Calibri family of fonts, you would have to select the Calibri and then you would have to select the style on the right hand side and it would become very tedious indeed. Whereas with this unified font browser, we can see all the different options in front of us and we can select them and see them represented with the text file in the main canvas. This is going to make the workflow a lot easier to do. I am very happy about this one. It has just made using text a whole lot easier. So there you go, my friends. There is a summary of the version 1.4 beta and the features that we can expect in the main release of Inkscape version 1.4. Did you know that you can become a member of the Button Press Graphics YouTube channel? Well, now you do. You will get a lot of added benefits and you will directly support the channel enabling me to make much better content in the future. Also, you can send in your artwork into the creative corner. This is a regular section where I will showcase your work in a future video. But for now, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'm going to bid you all a fond farewell and I will see you next time.